Before we begin, you should know that this PowerPoint presentation is based on the original PDF uploaded on eLearning. Good day everyone, I hope you are all in good health. Today, we will discuss the last chapter for the course Introduction to Databases. In this last chapter is all about NoSQL, which is a non-relational database system. Now, in the previous chapters, we have already discussed the basic database concepts and operation of the relational database, specifically in chapter one. And then we have applied the logical database design principles, including ER diagrams in chapter two, enhanced entity relationship diagrams in chapter three, the relational data model in chapter four, and the database normalization process in chapter five. Now, all of these previous topics focus on relational databases. In this new chapter, chapter six, you will get to understand the concepts of non-relational databases, particularly NoSQL. So this chapter is divided into a five part video series, where um, the first part is all about NoSQL concepts. You will get to know what NoSQL is, the reason why there is NoSQL, and a comparison between relational databases and non-relational databases. Then, in the next four parts, we will discuss in detail the four types of NoSQL databases. We will begin with key value databases in 6.2, document-oriented database in 6.3, um, graph databases in 6.4 and lastly um, column store database in 6.5 so first let us cover the basic concepts of, of NoSQL let us begin so what is NoSQL? NoSQL originally refers to non-SQL non-relational but the most common reference to it is not only SQL, where the SQL stands for Structured Query Language, which is a standard language for storing, manipulating, and retrieving data in databases. Yeah, with emphasis on not only SQL. Now, what exactly is NoSQL? NoSQL is a different type of database compared to the traditional relational database management systems. NoSQL is a non-relational database system that does not require a fixed schema. The term NoSQL was introduced by Carlos Strozzi in 1998, and Strozzi used the term for um, NoSQL for, for his lightweight open source relational database. Today, NoSQL is a popular database in the database market. Companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Google collect huge amounts of data every day, and these tech giants use NoSQL database. Um, NoSQL databases essentially became popular because of these tech giants because these tech giants use big data and real-time web applications. Now, big data refers to extremely large data sets, and NoSQL has lots of new features that deal with large volumes of data, what we call as big data. So if the relational database approach is a tried and tested approach, then why is there a need for NoSQL? So here's why. You should know that relational databases were born long before the internet, big data, mobile communications were invented. They were originally developed to be run on a single server. So if we want to increase the capacity of these databases, of the relational databases, then we will need to upgrade the servers. And today, we witness an exponential growth of internet and massive rise of web, mobile, and IoT, or Internet of Things, IoT applications. And with this in mind, 
For companies to remain competitive, they have to deliver applications and services faster than ever before. So, speaking of faster, speed and agility is then considered very important in these types of applications. Agility is associated with agile, and agile means when the requirements of an application changes, the data model also changes. In relational databases, the database schema or the data model is predefined and fixed, while in non-relational databases, it is not. So if changes are required in applications that uses relational model, then the data model must also be changed, which can be tasky, meaning a new manual and time-consuming work to change things. But with NoSQL, a NoSQL database fully supports agile development. Because it is schemaless, that is why it is best for, for changing, for, for, for big data, for handling big changes in a company in, or in many organizations that uses really huge amounts of data. So here is an example of um, a comparison between a relational and um, a non-relational database. Let me get the highlighter there. So in a relational database, we are very familiar with this one. We have been discussing relational databases for the past five chapters, okay? So as we can see in here, in a relational database, we structure data in tables. So we have here a lecturer table and a department table. The lecturer table has four columns and these are the four columns, while a department table has two columns. And lecturer and departments are associated with each other with the use of the foreign key, right? And also tables have um, IDs. They have, they have primary keys. But with non-relational databases, as you can see, and if we can compare, it's not, it's not so strict. It's not really a table. The, the schema is different. Although there are, um, a, uh, there is a similarity, but it is not strict as with regards to um, tables. So here is another comparison of relational and non-relational databases. So in relational data model, it uses structured query language, and every database has a predefined structure or schema. You have this table associated with another table, and then it has a relationship, and sometimes relationships have attributes. So everything is structured. There is a schema. There is a table that needs to, to be connected with another table. Now, all records of the table is restricted to use the same column name and data types, and we know that. But with non-relational model using no SQL, there is no predefined structure, excuse me, meaning it's schemaless. Any data can be stored in any record and it provides more flexibility. And aside from that, it can be scalable. It is open to expansion into handling large volumes of data. So here is a table comparing SQL and no SQL databases, or relational and a non-relational database. So in SQL, it is a relational database. It is structured through, uh, through tables. But with non-relational databases, such as no SQL, it is structured in many ways. There are many um, types of it. So we can structure it using document-based or using key value pairing or graphs and several other types of structuring. Now, in a relational database or in SQL, data is structured, again, through tables. In no SQL, data is structured, it is semi-structured or unstructured. Now, in SQL also, pretty f there is a predefined schema or structure, while in no SQL, it is dynamic. It can expand, it can scale. Dynamic schema, 
for unstructured, there is a dynamic schema for unstructured data. As with regards to the database management systems, Oracle, MySQL, MS Access, and several others are examples of um, relational database management systems. While MongoDB, HBase, Cassandra, React, and several others are examples of no SQL database management systems. Now, I've been talking about the types of no SQL databases. So here are the four types. The first one is key value database. Examples of these um, types are, uh, sorry, of this type of no SQL database is React, Tokyo Cabinet, Redis, um, Memcached, Scalaris. For document-oriented database, we have MongoDB, CouchDB, OrientDB, and RavenDB. Then for graph databases, it would look like this. It's, this is how data is structured. There is a graph and one thing is associated with another thing. Examples of this um, database, of the database management system for graph databases is Neo4j, InfoGrid, Infinite Graph, FlockDB. And lastly, we'll have um, column store database. So we have Bigtable, Cassandra, HBase, and Hypertables as examples of database management systems for column store databases. Now, um, this would be, this would cover, that covers everything for 6.1, all about the basic concepts of um, no SQL. By the way, here are the online references. You can um, copy the links and then read them on your own on Google. So, um, well, that's it for this first part of the five-part video series. Next video would be about key value database. So, till then, thank you for watching and listening. Please don't forget to um, view the next part, which is all about key value databases. So till then, stay healthy and see you in the next presentation, in the next video. Thank you.